Hello everyone, Sam the Game here, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you episode 2 of my new series, Sunday Talk, where I sit down and debate pretty much any topic you guys want to suggest to me. Now, originally I was going to talk about religion and the origins of the universe today, but when I actually sat down and had a think about that topic, I realised that that topic is just far too big to talk about in one video. I mean... It's a, it's a massive area of discussion, and you could spend you know, days and days and days talking about that. So what I've decided to do is cut it down to size a little bit. What I'm going to talk about today is sort of religion's role in modern society. Um, whether religion has a place alongside scientific advancement, and whether organised religion or just spirituality can coexist with you know, the quest and thirst for knowledge and science. So that's the topic I'm going to talk about today. What I am going to do is I'm going to leave the origins of the universe for another time because I think that's a very, very interesting topic and I think you guys would be, you know, interested to hear what I have to say about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pencil that in sometime in the future, but I don't think I'm going to do it next week because what I'm looking to do with this series is have, you know, topics that are quite broad and I don't really want to spend two or three weeks on quite a narrow spectrum. So if you guys would like to suggest another topic, preferably not in the area of religion or the origins of the universe next week, Please don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll uh, I'll be sure to get round to all of the best ones in good time. So today's talk is going to be, like I've said, religion's role in modern society and its conflict with, well, not really conflict, but its coexistence with science. Now, to preface this discussion, I'm going to briefly outline what I consider to be my religious views. Now, I'm not a particularly religious person, you know, I don't go to church. You know, very often I might go at Christmas or Easter or something, but you know, I'm not one of those sort of people who goes week in, week out. But, you know, saying that at the same time, I am not this arch atheist, you know, the, this Richard Dawkins caricature sort of person. I don't really believe in organised religion. You know, I don't like sitting in the church every week and, you know, repeating the same prayers and singing the same hymns because. To me, that's not what religion's about. Religion's about your own personal connection, you know, to your spiritual side. You know, it, it, this, it sounds a little bit strange, but for me, religion isn't about sitting in front of a church and having a guy in a robe up, up front telling you what you should be doing with your life. Having religious views, religious beliefs, and the spirituality is just about your moral code. Now, one of the, the brilliant things with organised religion is that it doesn't matter which one you choose, it could be Islam, Christianity, Judaism, anything. They all preach, you know, basic, good human values. And that that's what I think is one of the, the major strengths of religion, is that it, you know, promotes community spirit, it promotes just behaving in a good way. Now obviously when this gets taken too far by extremists who use religion in the name of violence, that is too far. But you know, religion at its core is a very, very good thing, I think. Because while these people like Richard Dawkins may belittle you know, other people for having religious views, I think the people with religious views actually show a more rounded personality than someone like Richard Dawkins. Because Richard Dawkins, he's become a little bit of a caricature of himself. He's just saying things that I think more and more controversial just to get his name in the headlines. And I have one example of uh, something he said that I really, really disagree with. I mean, there's this uh, guy called William Lane Craig, and I, I don't particularly know much about him, but one of the things that Richard Dawkins said about William Lane Craig is he called him morally repulsive for believing in heaven and an afterlife. And I had to read that again to make sure I'd heard that correctly, you know, seen the world, read that correctly. For another human being to call someone repulsive for having a belief in something after this world is, you know, it's it's staggering. I can't believe that in this supposedly tolerant society we live in today, someone can say that to another human being. Now, you, what your own personal opinion is, I, I really don't care, you know. No, well, not like I don't care, but I don't mind. You can believe whatever you want. That's one of the, the benefits of living in a free society. But when you call someone morally repulsive just because they have a slightly different viewpoint to you, I think that is, that's definitely below board. And, you know, you can understand, like, Richard Dawkins' viewpoint. You know, if you don't believe in heaven, if you don't believe in a God, that's fine. But you should never belittle other people for their legitimately held beliefs. And I think, 
you know that's what the main thing I wanted to start this this conversation off with you know just because you have a different set of beliefs to another person does not give you this right to belittle and put down those other people's views just because they're different to your own and uh, that's what I think with these you know the leading figures of the atheist community they're not really prepared to engage in any sort of meaningful debate they just want to belittle and say punchy sound bites and sell their books and that, that's really about it but you know I want to just go a little bit further on now and talk a little bit more about you know literal religion and creationism and or things like that because you know I've said already that I'm not a particularly rig religious person so when I see people like treat the Bible as a literal truth. I, I struggle to, you know, to, to get my head around that. Um, for me, what I, I see the Bible as is a sort of a guide to life. You know, it's a series of events. They may or may not have happened, but what, what I think the Bible is, it's like a, a, a manual, a manual to life. So if you're struggling, you read the Bible and it gives you advice. You know, it's a book of advice. Now, I do think Jesus existed. You know, th there was probably a man called Jesus, you know, who was born in Bethlehem and who preached to people. You know, th that is almost certainly true. Whether he was a son of God, that's all up to your own personal beliefs. But what I think religion is fantastic at doing is giving people good values. I mean, religion, every single religion, major world religion out there, preaches togetherness and fellowship and community and just being good human beings. And for Richard Dawkins to call someone morally repulsive for believing in those things. I think that's it's very very sad to hear, but it's not, you know, it's not surprising to me when he says that. Um but like I say, I don't believe the Bible is a literal truth, you know. I don't believe that Abraham actually took Isaac up the hill and was going to sacrifice him until God told him no and showed him the ram in, and that was trapped in the bush or whatever. But these stories are designed to make people you know, learn and improve themselves. You know, if you read the Bible, you're not going to become a worse person for it because it, it will help build that side of you that perhaps you don't really spend that much time on. Because a lot of people, when talking about spirituality, it seems to be like this fringe idea now this whole idea of spirituality whenever you say spirituality to someone they think of psychics and all this mumbo jumbo sort of stuff but you know ev i think every single human being has some sort of spiritual side to them and that's the sort of side that really science is struggling to explain because you know i am a huge science buff i love space travel i love it all of that sort of stuff and i think you know Darwin's theory of evolution is the most complete theory we have at the moment to describe how we came to be and it, it's a lot more complete than say the the creationists who believe in the literal words of um, Genesis now Genesis uh, what they think the origins of Genesis were was a poem possibly written by Moses but it was definitely a poem because in its original language of Hebrew, that passage, Genesis, rhymes. So you could you know, think that is just similar to the sort of thing I was arguing earlier, that the Bible is a guide to life, because I don't think the person who wrote Genesis meant it to show the actual process of making Earth. Even if he did believe, which he probably did, that God created the heaven and Earth, I don't think he... Um, used the, the Genesis story as an accurate representation of that. What I think he was doing is just establishing morals. You know, work on the you know work during the week, have Sunday off. You know, on the Sabbath, rest on the Sabbath, all that sort of thing. It's just building the moral code of that religion. And for people to, you know, believe that that poem is the be all and end all in terms of the creation of the world and the universe I think that's a little a little bit too far as well because whilst you can say that the atheists and especially people like Richard Dawkins um, go a lot too far I think creationists go much much further because one of the brilliant things of the last hundred years is that the human race has advanced 
so so far i mean a hundred years ago we'd barely invented powered flight and now we send humans up into space you know every couple of months we have humans living permanently in space in the international space station we have satellites at the edge of our galaxy and beyond you know science got those things for us you know fundamentalist religion doesn't do those things so I personally put much more of a credence and much more importance in the development of science but when scientists and atheists concentrate entirely on science and ignore religion as this lie and this sideshow I th really think they miss out on a large proportion of life and a large part of life's experiences because at the end of the day you're not going to find all you need every single answer you're going to get on the, through a test tube you know the whole point of scientific advancement is to try and find out as much as you can about who we are and where we're going and what the universe is but that's not to say it should exclude your spiritual side and although some people perhaps don't want to believe in the spiritual side that's fine but if some people do want to hold religious beliefs that then that's also fine because like i said the vast majority of people who are religious benefit hugely from that and for Richard Dawkins to call people morally repulsive because they have religious beliefs I think that's that's pretty abhorrent but I'm just gonna leave that little tiny bit of a uh, of the talk uh, over there sorry I'll get my words out and yeah I'm gonna finish that little bit of talk there and move on to the idea of an afterlife now I just want to start this part of the discussion by reading a quote that from Stephen Hawking obviously one of the the greatest minds of all, all time and he said, I regard the brain as a computer which will stop working when its components fail. There is no heaven or afterlife for a broken down computer. Um, I think that's a very, very interesting way to put it. I mean, obviously at its very, very minimum, the human brain is just a computer. I mean, the human body is just a computer. But the human body is so much more than just a series of chemical reactions, you know. Whilst our core processes might just be proteins and you know, all carbohydrates, starch, all of this stuff, the fact is the human brain does something that a computer can never do. It has empathy and it has you know, feelings. You know, computers can't have feelings. Human brains can. And I think just by describing you know, a human brain as a computer cuts all of this potential out. You know, my own personal beliefs in an afterlife and creation is that whether I, you know, there'll be a heaven with God sitting on the cloud and everyone gets their own little space and all of your wishes are fulfilled, I, I think that's probably <laughs> quite unlikely. But there should be no, you know, there isn't any proof that there isn't a heaven, and that's the thing. I don't think it's very likely that you'll end up on some cloud somewhere. But that's not to say that there's not a higher level of existence. Now, we are relatively early into our evolutionary cycle. I mean, we've been around for less than a million years. So, who's to say in three, four, five million years time, if humans are still alive, then we might have discovered that perhaps the idea of a traditional afterlife is you know, a lie or a fabrication, but there might be some sort of higher level, higher plane of existence that perhaps we don't know about. Now, on the other side of the argument, scientists will probably say that there's no proof for an afterlife, so why should people blindly believe? It's just a, a cover story. It's you know a tonic for people who are scared of death. Now, that might be true, but the, the fact is, if you believe in these things, and if these beliefs make you happier and make you better as a person, why is that a bad thing? Even if they're not true. If you believe in them, they're true for you, and that's the thing. I really don't understand people who belittle other people for their beliefs. It's you know, Even if you personally can't understand what someone believes, you need to look at it from their shoes. They probably don't understand why you believe what you believe, but they let you get on with it. So, whilst I admittedly think that there probably isn't an afterlife and I'm not particularly religious I still see a spiritual side and I you know I have to say in my times of need I do pray you know and I don't I'm not particularly religious so I can completely understand why some people really are very very religious indeed and 
I think that's what makes life exciting and good because the variety if everyone thought like Richard Dawkins the world would be a boring boring place and this is the you know the whole brilliance of life this discovery and I think this you know conflict if you can call it a conflict between science and religion it really does push the boundaries of what we understand because we're talking about things that you know a thousand years ago were banned you know we were talking about that perhaps god doesn't exist and the heaven doesn't doesn't exist and we're trying to think of ways how the universe was created and coming up with theories and you know all this thing all of this progress is magnificent but when this progress tries to undermine people for their beliefs i think that's where science is wrong you know religion and religious fanatics are wrong when they try and impose religious beliefs on other people but you can say that r science has become its own sort of religion you know it has its own sort of heads like stephen hawking and you know the religion of atheism i think it, it's quite you know it's it's interesting to note anyway that you know atheists are so you know when I say atheists, I mean people like Richard Dawkins. I don't just mean the average person. I mean like the arch atheists. You know, they have sort of created their own cult following. They are at the top of their atheist cult and they have their followers. Very similar to a religion. And I think that, you know, that is a very, very interesting observation that Richard Dawkins sits there and slates all those people who have religious views whilst at the same time he is at the head of an organisation that its structure is relatively similar to perhaps an organised religion. So I think I'm going to leave the, the, the talk there. It's been pretty interesting. You know, th This was a, a topic that really, really interested me. But when I sat down to actually speak about it, I realised just how vast an area of conversation this is. So if you want me to debate any other part of religion or the, the debate between religion and science in a separate video, please don't hesitate to leave a comment because, you know, like I said, this is such a massive topic. I would be quite happy to come back and talk about another part of this in the future. But I hope this little bit of a talk over my religious beliefs and how organised religion and atheism can fit together and, you know, whether individual spirituality really is for the individual or for the group. You know, I hope you've enjoyed it because I, I certainly have enjoyed talking about this today. So, guys, I really, really thank you for, for watching and listening. I hope you've enjoyed the video and as always, have a great day.